I know it's not even winter yet, but we're already thinking about spring, and I have a feeling you might be too. Hi, everybody. I'm Evan Fitzgerald. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Victoria Logley, and we're with At Properties, Christie's International. So we get this question all the time. What can you do to prepare your house for a spring sale? Yeah, so make sure you stick around at the end because besides these, let me bring it up because why not? There we go. Three top tips to sell your home fast in the spring. We have a bonus tip at the very end, so make sure you stick around. Uh, so the first one on our list, and we're gonna, we have these visually for you so you can uh, follow along with us. Uh, the first one is to start thinking now for that spring declutter. First of all, why do you need to start thinking about decluttering your home in order to sell? Well, it really is the number one thing you can do as far as preparing your home for the market, whether it's in the spring or any time. Victoria, this is the thing I think when you sit down with uh, potential sellers, it, it really is the first thing that comes up in those conversations because it is so important. It's, it's actually the number one thing, believe it or not. The number one thing you can do to get your house ready is to declutter. There's a stat out there that we all have about 300,000 items in our homes. That's a lot of stuff. Get rid of a third of it if you can, right? A third of the stuff in your closet, a third of the stuff that's just laying around, all that clutter, pack it up, donate it, get rid of it. And, and I don't think, you know, just so everybody understands, we're not saying in the middle of the winter with all that snow outside, bag it all up and take it out. But it's more about preparations, right? It's going through, yeah, organization, understanding, okay, these are the things that I, I want to uh, give away, whether it's donations or how, how you're going to, to think about moving things out. That preparation and getting in that headspace is so important. And if you start now, it's going to be so much easier and less daunting when we get to the springtime and it's time to actually start getting moving on these things. I think that's key, less daunting, right? You want to do what you can now. There's no rush. It's not hysteria. You don't have to get it all done in a week. But make a plan to declutter and, and remove a lot of these things. And for inspiration, you know, I love Marie Kondo. And she says if it doesn't bring you happiness. If, if an object doesn't bring you happiness and joy, get rid of it. I think that's a really good way to go. And then of course, there's our, our favorite ladies from the home edit, uh, Cleon and Joanna. However, they're a little crazy with the containers. I, I don't buy anything new for this organization. Use what you have, right? We don't yeah. need to bring anything else new into the home. Use what you have to declutter. No question. All right. So number two, and this one, I know, um, and maybe people are looking at number two, replace your older carpets and thinking, you know, oh, this this is a huge deal. But Victoria, I know that, you know, the way that you're going to explain it, it's not as, as I guess you use the word again, daunting as maybe people think. Right. Right. So we all have like my kids carpets are disgusting in their rooms. We just changed them out five years ago and they're already gross. Right. It's really important when you're selling a house, to put your best foot forward. And the last thing you want people to do is walk into a room and see the stains and the this and the that and go, ew, that's gross. It's not that big of an expense. You can go to your big box stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, local uh, carpet. Uh, I have a local guy from Chicago. He's amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's not that expensive to change out your carpet. I know geometric patterns and loud, bold colors are very in. Don't do that. To sell, you want to be neutral. You want to go neutral gray, a, a neutral darker um, earth tones or natural beiges, but nothing light either that's going to get dirty like a white or a cream as much as you might be tempted to do that. And if you have area rugs too, now's the time to start thinking about those as well. Do they need a cleaning? Do they need to be replaced? Now, Victoria and I will both tell you, if you have these gorgeous hardwood floors, we're going to suggest accentuating those and maybe removing the area rugs completely to yes. show off those beautiful floors. 100%. But that's not always the case. And so sometimes you want those area rugs to sort of give a pop, either a pop of a little bit of, of neutral color, but something to to give the room, uh, you know, a little bit of flavor to, to help accentuate the room. So we understand that. But now is the perfect time to look around your house and see which one of those area rugs maybe does need to be cleaned, could be replaced. It, it's a great opportunity to, to give a fresh look to a room with a fairly, you know, inexpensive and easy switch. Yes. One more thing, stair runners, the carpets that go up the stairs, sometimes those are so nasty and people feel like they have to have brand new fresh runners for the stairs. You don't just take it out. And I know yeah. there might be a little discoloration from the wood or whatnot, or if it's gross and it's tattered and ruined, just remove it. You don't necessarily need to replace the stair runners. And um, there's a product that I absolutely love. It's called Bona. And it's, um, I'll put a link in, in the description below as well. -ish. And it'll just sort of get rid of all those little scuffs and scrapes and just make it all cohesive. So you don't have to replace the runner, but you might have to absolutely get rid of it. 
And that point leads me into our next one, because Victoria is talking about, you know, taking an opportunity if you do have a torn or worn carpet to to get that out of there to fix something that is broken. Now, that may be a little bit of a stretch, but more specifically, now's the time to look at that list in your house. And we all have them. We all, all have the, the little honey things. List. We yes. all have the honey do list, right? We know. Yeah. <laughs> Now is the time to, to start checking off those things on the list. And I'll give you some examples of some ones that are probably in my house right now. I'm sure that you have some of these in your house. These are things that you can get fixed be between now and the spring. Have that done with so that we're not talking about it later down the line in an inspection. For one, smoke detectors. That's a big one. Do they all have batteries? Are they working? If they're not working, make sure that they're either repaired or replaced because you don't want uh, to have to deal with 12 smoke detectors during an inspection. Right. A lot of people just take them down when they start chirping. My husband is the worst with that. He takes it down, it's chirping and sticks it in a closet. You have to have working smoke detectors legally, right. to, you know, when, when you go to sell a house. So fix right. it. Right. And then there's other little things, right? So that that faucet that that sort of rattles or is loose when you turn it, have a plumber come in and take care of that. Um, you know, uh, there's the toilet, uh, the, to the loose toilet. Thank you. The That's the one that toilets. I was thinking of. I've got a toilet that flushes three times. We push the flush <laughs> and it flushes three times. It drives me crazy. Those types of things. We know we need to fix the toilets too, right? Yeah. And so the reason that we say this, and I'll, I'll emphasize it again, is when it comes time to sell your house and when you do accept an offer, the first thing that's going to happen is that home inspection and all of these little things. These are things that are going to come up later. And it's so by knocking off as many of these things now, it just makes that process run so much smoother. And there are just less issues down the line, which obviously we all want when uh, we're dealing with such a, a big and, and uh, important uh, situation like selling our home. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, then the bonus tip, right? We've got a bonus tip. I'm not sure if this is going to go over very well, but paint your kitchen cabinets. There it is. I cannot tell you. It's Don't paint them green. I know the 2022 <laughs> trend was painting kitchen cabinets green. Don't do that. If you love the color green, save that for your new house. But for selling a home, white kitchen cabinets sell. It's crazy. It's it it's it brightens the space. It makes it feel fresh. I know wood is also very in, but a lot of us have those older oak cabinets or or the cherry cabinets that aren't really in. And in a coat of paint can go a long way. And and just neutral. I love Chantilly lace from Benjamin Moore. Um, simply white or dove white. And some of those are sort of cream. Also, they're not bright stark white. So you can go a warmer white. But a white kitchen cabinet will go a long way in selling your home. And I know what a lot of people at, at home are thinking right now. They're saying, well, but my cabinets are older and I can paint them white, but they're still going to be older. And okay. I have a tip that may actually surprise you that you can take those older cabinets and by just a couple of little tweaks, make them feel like new modern cabinets. And the, the right. first one that you can do this really easy, those hinges that you have, and you go into this new these new houses and they have these awesome soft close hinges and drawers with soft close that actually can be changed out and and be done to your kitchen it's it's actually not very a inexpensive plan. right super you, you inexpensive get the new those hinges. things are 50 right. cents they make those soft close hinges in all the different installation styles that you might have in your kitchen and obviously there are several different ways that your hinges might function in your kitchen they'll make soft close for almost all of those you can 100%. change those out it will feel like a newer kitchen. And then the hardware on the front that may date the kitchen in some way. Change those out with newer hardware. That's also, uh, it, it can be very inexpensive depending on where you purchase it. And it can give it that modern feel and function for somebody that's coming in and taking a look at the house. Now you've got these beautiful white cabinets. They have soft clothes, new hardware. It's going to feel very much like a new kitchen luxurious for sure the soft hinges super inexpensive the first thing sometimes buyers do it is so weird i've seen this happen hundreds probably thousands of times they take the kitchen cabinet they open it and then they shut it to see if it has that soft yep. hinge and the soft close and it's not expensive to add you can you can add that later and as far as the hardware goes there are so many beautiful modern inexpensive options that you can even just get on amazon in fact we'll leave a few links yeah. in, down below in the description so you can check out a couple really cool trending modern inexpensive um, knobs and handles for your kitchen cabinets thank you for watching and what we want to know put in the comments below What's the number one thing you're going to try and do this winter? Let us know.